Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson and today we are going to be looking at a question that came across my LinkedIn and that question deals with how to design a PCIe edge card. Now PCIe edge cards have a very particular mechanical spec because they are mechanically keyed and they have to sit in a PCIe edge connector. While the pinouts are well-defined, the mechanical aspects can be difficult to find, especially if you do not have a copy of the PCIe base standard. I'm gonna show you how to design this type of card, and I even have a template that I created in Altium Designer, which you can use in your projects. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along, and let's get started. PCIe Edge Cards servers, they're used in desktop computers, and of course they're used for things like graphic cards as well as some specialized network cards, different types of add-in cards. They're used for all sorts of things. Now if you've ever tried to design a PCIe Edge card, then you probably have started by looking at that connector that sits on the motherboard, and unfortunately that connector has a very particular mechanical spec, and it is mechanically keyed. That means you have to get the dimensions just right on your circuit board in order for your PCIe add-in card to mate directly into that connector. Let's take a look at a question on LinkedIn that I was tagged in, and we can see how this whole situation with this PCIe card design got started. Brandon Weatherly writes on LinkedIn, to all of the high-speed board designers out there, has anyone ever created a PCIe card? I'm scratching my head on how you form the insert portion because it's not as simple as just downloading a simple 2D footprint from online and importing it into your program. How do you create this in your board layout portion? I really don't see any reference online and I am beyond confused here. Brandon, I am here to help you out. As you can see here when I I scroll down, Jordan Danko has tagged me in this and so I felt it was mandatory that I make a video on this because I actually have designed PCIe edge cards. Now, if you're familiar with the PCIe edge card standard, you'll know that the edge card dimensions and the pinout is based on the number of PCIe lanes that you want to use on the edge card. These come in one lane, four lane, eight lane, and 16 lane versions and that number of lanes is going to determine the number of pins that you need to have on the card, as well as the overall size of the card, especially the insert portion that goes into the PCIe edge connector. So let's take a look at the pinout, and let's take a look at this template that I have in Altium Designer. Now here I have in Altium Designer a template project that I've created for a PCIe edge card with the PCIe edge connector placed as a component. Now, if you wanna download these files, just check out the link in the description. You can download a zip that contains these project files, and then you can modify it as you see fit. Now here, I have an eight lane PCIe edge connector. You can see here that in this component, I have labeled out all of the pins and assigned ports to all of the pins, so that way you can integrate this into a hierarchical schematic project. Now here, inside of the PCB doc file, I've set up an edge card, and the part that really matters for the insert portion is down here in this selection area. So you can see right here, we have the mechanical key, and then you can see here we have the pin numbering on the top side, as well as on the bottom side. Now, initially I've set this up as a four layer board with two ground planes. Of course, you can't see the ground planes, but I've set this up with two internal planes. Again, you can take this project, you can use it as is, you can add layers to it in the interior of the stack up and make it into your own design. Now, I've also included some coupling capacitors here. And the capacitors here are really just meant to show the placement. You could remove these coupling capacitors if you want and place them on your main board, but you do need the coupling capacitors, and we'll discuss that here in just a moment. But what I've done here is I've placed these in this location because you need to have some clearance between the card edge and any other components that might appear on this card, so that way this card can fully insert into the edge connector on your motherboard. Now here, if we just measure from the board edge up to the lower end of 
this uh, coupling capacitor pair, you can see right here that it's about 8.8 .8 millimeters. That might be a little larger than you would normally need because here there's a little bit of margin with this keying slot, but this keying slot is very important. That's what's gonna guide these pins into place into the edge connector and ensure that you get the right connections to the right locations on that edge connector. Now, in order to use this project, you can just take this schematic, you can integrate it with your other circuitry that you're gonna use in your design, and then go ahead and do an update into the PCB layout. Once you do that update, the nets are going to import into the PCB layout, and then they will get assigned to the pins that you see here. Now, what we've discussed here deals with the mechanical specification for an eight lane PCIe edge card. However, we wanna deal with a 16 lane PCIe edge card. That means we're gonna to have to extend this pin out to the direction here along the right, and we'll need to extend that out to the required number of pins in a 16 lane card. You can extend the board edge right here off to the right, and you wanna make sure that when you extend this board edge to the right, when you copy these pins over to the right in the footprint, you wanna maintain this distance between the board edge and the edge of this pin. And as you can see here, that's about a quarter of a millimeter. So make sure you maintain that as you extend out the board edge and expand this to a 16 lane PCIe card. Now let's take a look at the pinout for a 16 lane card. Pinoutguide.com has a really great article here and a set of tables for PCIe edge connectors for the one lane, four lane, eight lane, and 16 lane versions. Now I should note there is a 32 lane version of PCIe cards, but it is not very often used. I think if you do enough digging, you can probably find the specification on it. Now here in the one lane card, you can see that the pin count terminates pretty quickly right after the mechanical key. When we scroll down here to the eight lane card, you can see that we have 49 pins on each side of the card, and that's exactly what we have in the Altium project. Now with the 16 lane card, if we just scroll down here, you can see that we have a total of 82 pins on this card. You'll have to expand out that pin out all the way to 82 pins in that Altium project in order to form that PCIe card. Now what about the dimensions of the card? Well, the dimensions that I have here in this project are actually not designed to any particular standard. They're below the maximum dimensions that are in the standard, but they're really just set here in the project just as an example. So you can set your own dimensions. Now, the dimensions you can actually find on Wikipedia, and we don't have to go through Wikipedia articles on this channel, but you will see here a small table that lists the dimensions of these cards, and these are maximum dimensions. And you see here we have entries for a millimeter and in inches. So this card could be up to 12.28 inches long or 312 millimeters long. And that would be in the X direction here as shown in the Altium project. Now, obviously, if we extend out this pin out to the right, we're going to have to extend out the card eventually. For this particular card outline that I have in this project, if you extend this out to a 16 lane PCIe card, you may not need to extend the right edge of this board. So I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for viewers. Again, make sure to download the project files in the description and you can go through and do that modification because it is pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at the pinout just one more time and we can see some pretty interesting design of this pinout particularly for purposes of signal integrity. As you look through the pinout, you'll probably notice something as you look across the A side and the B side of this pinout. You'll notice here that all of the transmit and receive lanes are interleaved with ground pins. Now that is intentionally done on this pinout to ensure that there is some ground to help control lane to lane crosstalk across all of these lanes on this card. Now you have some other important pins here. You have a hot plug detect pin, you have pins that are allocated for JTAG, and then you have 12 volt power and 3.3 volt power pins. So if you are going to design this edge card, I highly recommend that you do what I did in this project file, which is to create a pinout footprint and then place that into the design along that bottom edge of the card. Now, unfortunately, I have not been able to find a set of dimensions that very nicely summarize the mechanical spec 
the dimensions in this card were given to me by a client for an earlier project and I have reused those dimensions in this project. So go ahead and take it from me that these dimensions are correct because all those projects where I have used these dimensions, those projects have been manufactured and they're verified to fit into the PCIe edge connectors. Now let's take a look at the PCIe edge connectors themselves. There are several options out there from different connector vendors. And as you go to higher and higher generations of PCIe cards, those connectors are backwards compatible. Let's take a look here at the basic one from Samtech. Now, one great thing about Samtech is they actually let you configure these cards a little bit either as right angle or as vertical cards. And you can configure things such as the row count, the pin count, things like that with all their part numbers. Now here, this is a Gen 3 card. And you can see here that I have it configured in right angle configuration. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that this connector is a through hole component. You can see here in the 3D view that we have some pins that will go into your motherboard on the PCB. Now for lower generations of PCIe, maybe Gen 2 or Gen 3, that's just fine. You're not gonna have issues with stubs until you get to a really thick board. You could also just route your input through the back layer into this edge connector, and then that's going to also eliminate that issue with stubs. Now, of course, once you get to maybe Gen 3 or Gen 4 and then faster, you may have an issue with stubs, and that's where you'll want to go to a surface mount connector, such as what you see here in this part number. Now this part number is a surface mount connector for up to 16 lanes, and you can see here that we have the surface mount pins on the bottom side. So these connectors are available in both formats. Make sure that you choose the right one for your design and route into it correctly. Now the current generation of PCIe is Gen 6, and as you can see here on the Amphenol website, we have some connectors that are rated for Gen 6. So this is very important because the later generation edge connectors are backwards compatible in terms of signal integrity, but if you buy a Gen 2 connector, it may not be able to transmit signals up to Gen 4, for example. So keep that in mind. You can always buy a higher generation connector and use a lower generation card, but not the reverse. Now there is one last thing that I want to go over on these cards, which is the grounding strategy. Now typically the grounding strategy is pretty straightforward. You're just going to bridge grounds across the card connector going onto your motherboard. So your card and your motherboard are going to share the same ground. I have never used or seen a PCIe card that uses, for example, a switching regulator that is isolated so that you would have two different grounds on these cards. However, I'm sure it's possible. Now, if you are using something like, for example, a network interface card, or maybe it is going to be an ethernet controller card, you are then going to have a separate ground on this because, of course, something like ethernet is going to be isolated inherently, and your mag jacks are going to have a chassis ground in addition to your system ground. Now, one thing that I've done here in this project is you'll see here around the edge, I included a set of vias going all the way around the edge of the card. Now this allows you to implement a via fence all the way around the card for any ground that you use in this design. Now this via fence is of course very useful for issues with EMI, so I recommend you keep it unless you have a reason to remove it, but of course you don't have to have this via fence around the edge. I have just included this for your convenience. This was a really great question. I love getting these kinds of questions on LinkedIn. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, don't be afraid to tag me if you ever have any of these questions. Or of course, you can leave a comment or question in the comment section on these YouTube videos, or you can send me a direct message. Thanks again for watching everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks. We'll see you next time.